Hello everybody, I hope you are well today and in today's video I have something really exciting I want to share with you. What I have is the spread operator in JavaScript. Maybe you are familiar with something, a concept which is exactly the same. In PHP, for instance, you call it a splat operator, S-P-L-A-T in Ruby as well, splat. But in JavaScript, it's a spread operator, a little bit like when you spread your chocolate spread on your sandwich. Same, well, kind of. So let's open node here on my terminal. I will just use the terminal, oops. Oh yeah, I'm already there. Beautiful, and here, I will show you, because you have the splat, sorry, the spread operator, I should say, and then you have the rest, which is the same, but the rest of something. First, let's do splat. So I have an array here. My array, I will have a few elements. So I will do Pierre, so probably name, to be name equals yeah, Pierre, and then after Henry, which is my second name, and then after Leah, and then after probably Rosie, and then after Charles, and so on. You see what I mean? Just a few names. Oh, I just forgot one double quote. You can use double or single quote, it's the same. So here, after doing that, I, let's say I have another array. And the other one is person, or maybe people, or probably title, let's say title, I like that. And here, again, I have like Dr. Mr. Mrs. and so on, you see what I mean. And here, what about if I want to merge both of them? If I just do another array, for people, and here, if I use name, if I have like something, and then I use name, it will, I will have the array there inside of my new array. However, if I use the spread operator, and then now I use the title, so basically I'm merging both arrays in a new array, by doing that, I will have all elements of each array in my new array. But if I don't use the spread operator for title, I will have the title array again in people. So I need to spread it to have all elements in the new array. Oops, tie, oh sorry, tie tall, like this. So uh, the typo, oh, because I have already declared before, let's just remove people for now, goodbye, and now, oh, didn't want to remove it. Let's try again, oh, um, <laughs> that's uh, annoying. And, um, well, let's just create a new array for now. <laughs> Sorry, uh, people too. And now I have people too, and if I'm checking, if, if I check people too, you see, I have all elements there. Beautiful, isn't it? Like, it's in there. It's so beautiful because we, we just spread them. And by spreading them, you have this kind of result. So now, what about after, you know, that, that array, so we have people, we have title and name spread it into people too. What about if I have a function? Let's say I have a splat row function. And here, I will have log. Why not? Log is nice, like login. And there, I will have mm -hmm, values. If I was in TypeScript, I could do something like this but I'm not in TypeScript, so I'm going to do only that. Only this, and here, oops, sorry, I was too fast. Um, I'm uh, hopefully 
JavaScript didn't, hopefully not, didn't add a log. No, normally it shouldn't. So I can reuse log. It hasn't been defined yet. Let's see. And here I'm going to do console dot log. Mm -hmm. And there values, yes, dot split because it's an array. Since we have triple dots, we are basically using the rest. So if I'm doing like this is the values, it's becoming an array. So you will see. And then I will have a comma or maybe just a dash. Why not? And finally, semicolon. And that's it pretty much. So I think we are good with that. Of course, I forgot this one. I can return the form of the value directly. So I don't need curly brackets. Yes. And let's do now. I will, I can have as many arguments as I want in the log function. It's amazing, right? So I can have Pierre. I can have Sophia. I can have Charles. I can have Pi. Some people call, <laughs> write my name Pi. I'm not a Pi. I'm sorry. And then, uh, that's it. Oh. Oh, why I always forget the code for Charles and yeah, perfect. And oh, speed. Oh, that's a funny one. Values. Hmm. Oh, this is in interesting. Interesting split. Oh, no, I don't want to split it actually. Um, split. Hmm. Let me check. I have a doubt. Split, split, split. That's just the other. Mm. This is because split is just the opposite. And um, if you have a string and you want the string to become an array, indeed you do split with a delimiter. But in our case, it's different. It's the opposite. We don't want to create an array. We want the, st the, the array to become a string. So we have to join the elements. Oh my God. Yeah, we have to join. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm losing like my English is just disappearing, like, you know, vanished. Where is my English working? Um, log. Oh yeah, of course. Now I'm sorry. I, we have log too. Why not? So yeah, so split basically when you have a string, let's, let's quickly do it. String like this. And then I have hello world. Hello. How are you? Okay. That's a string. And then I can do, I can use this string. And now I could use split indeed. And I will use the comma here like that. And now I will have an array of both hello and how are you? And then you could use, you could just uh, do like, if I want to access to how are you, I just do this. How are you? You see, but in our case, it's different. We want the other way around. We want to join. At least I'm really happy I did that mistake because now you can know both of them. If you didn't know, it's always a good refresh as well. So now I have this one, log two. And now, you know, sometimes your English like it's gone, it's vanished and you forgot how to have an array with the elements and how to join them. And then you say, oh yeah, join. Actually, you know, language is, is nice. There's plenty of flavors of the creators of the language, but as long as it's English, everybody understands kind of the language. Of course, there are some logics. 
there are some um, algorithms behind it, but the language itself, it's just a language, it's a tool, it's a way to speak to the computer. All right, so now log two, and here I'm going to do yes, hello, and then another part. Oh, what did I do there? Okay, we just will use the same arguments, and again, Charlie's. All right, you see, and now I have Pierre, so um, dash, Sophia, dash, Charles, dash, and Pierre. Uh, Pi, sorry, Pi, beautiful. And Charlie's, Pi, Sophia. What else? So that's basically what you can do. Another way you could do it, let's say I have here a array calls argument. Argument is my array. And here I have argument one, argument two, and then why not? I will have a third one, argument three. I was just checking if it was still, uh, you know, I'm using screen flow and sometimes it stops recording. I have a video actually on my channel, YouTube channel, about some issues you might have with screen flow. So if you got some files that are not working, corrupt it. Sometimes with screen flow, you want to reopen a file of your recording and it doesn't open. It says, file corrupted, something like that. And then you, you are just like, wow, I have spent two hours recording something and my file is not working. And fortunately I found a way to fix it and to recover the, the broken file. So if you are interested too, it's on my channel as well. The same channel you are watching this video. All right, so argument and then now, 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 I'm going to reuse log, log two. And here, what I'm going to do is to use the spread, yes, the spread operator. And I'm going to do that. Basically, it will add the three arguments inside. So you will see what it will do. And now I have argument one, argument two, argument three. Maybe for you, for a better example, what I could do is I will create another function and the function will be, hmm, what it will be? Mm, addition. All right. And basically we'll have Yeah, maybe multiply. Multiply argument one, argument two. All right, here we are. I know it's funny. I had like difficulties to think, huh, a good function multiply. Yeah, that's a good one. And then argument one times argument two and that's my function i have oh, of course i forgot the equal sign here and now let's do argument to to multiply perfect and here to be 24 and then 55 so 24 times 55 and then multiply and here I'm going to use the argument, argument to multiply. Perfect. And you see, it's um, 1,320 multiply. I hope I didn't do a typo. Oh no, it's not a typo. Beautiful. Oh, my internet is so slow. I wonder why it's that slow. So yeah. Sometimes like English, yeah, no, it's not a typo. English is tricky. Multiply, perfect. Multiply, multiply, yeah. 
<laughs> All right, you see? And so it's 1,320. Beautiful. That's uh, lovely. And what else we can do if I want to have another function, let's say addition, for instance. So I will have addition equals, and here, um, num1 and then num2 to addition and again i will do here i will use the curly bracket so just so you see and i'm going to just i will just return that i like to do it differently so you can see but since we only have one instruction in the um, in the function in the in the splat arrow function we don't need curly brackets it's only if you have more than one instruction inside. And num2, perfect. So, and that's it. And now I can close it. And now addition. And what I will do again, const argument to add. And here it will be two, <laughs> two. So two plus two. Wow. That's a good one. And again, addition. And there, my spread operator, beautiful. Argument to add. Lovely. And let's see. It's four. Wonderful. So you see, you can also use it that way. But in my case, the way I do prefer the most is, again, like I said, to use like as a login when you have to log something or any other function, but when you don't know how many arguments you might have, values and something like that, console info, and then you would do, again, value like info, and then I can use the literal template so like that and then i will do values join very important and here i'm just going to do here we we'll use a comma i will not use a dash anymore and that will be it and now i can close that and that's it and oops i have argument list hmm Let's see what do we have. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, I don't. Um, missing parentheses after argument list. If you see it before me, that's amazing. Oh. Um, so I'm closing that, yes. I'm closing that, yes. I'm doing this, yes. Sometimes it's like just in front of you and you don't see it. Console info, all right. Why this is happening? Join, yes. I'm closing that one, all right. And then curly brackets because it's a little template in the tick and then yes mm. info so it's just there huh that's funny oh no, no that's one extra What are we going to do? <laughs> All right, we are nearly there. I just wonder why it doesn't like it. Of course, in my case, I like to code in the terminal because it's a bit harder, but more challenging too, which is really nice. Let's do just a console log. And you know, of course it knows Console info, yeah. I will do a console error. Just to show you like login, you could do, yeah, any kind of login. Um, but we have to find our issue. And our issue is,
Hmm. That's an interesting one. <laughs> or perhaps. Oh, yes, of course. Tick. I have two ticks. You see, it says missing, but after argument list. But it's not the parenthesis. It was just a tick. So, error. So, in my case, I added info. Oh, wait, I missed also the R. So, info, info, like this. And what I did, I did this. So, there was one tick and one tick there. And ticks are so small, actually, so it's easy to miss them and to see why I have this error. It's actually because I had two ticks. So, now it will work, of course. Nice. So, here, again, I can have value one and then value two. I can also use ticks. Why not? Value two. Yeah, why not? And then I can use single quote, of course. Value three and so on. When you have to debug and boom. And here I have value one, comma, value two, value three. So, you see, this is why I love spread operator. I can even have an object, if you wish. Object or oh, names, names and oh, per maybe person or oh, Pierre, myself. So it's like it will be about me. So name, it will be Pierre and then gender, gender male <laughs> and then age. Um, oh, I don't actually need uh, to have codes here, but well, that's okay. And then age, I will do that. And then perfect, awesome. And so now it's very basic. I have more characteristics than just a name, a gender and an age, but that's for now. I could have passions like hobbies. What's your hobby? So I could have hobby swimming, for instance. And now maybe I want to merge something inside of me, inside of Pierre, maybe what it will be. Um, probably to be, mm -hmm. try to find something cool. Oh, of course I know. Yeah, we spoke about hobbies. So it could be like hobbies, it would be, mm, um, yeah, name again. And the name will be swimming. And then here to be how often. So basically, uh, I try to find a cool name for how often. Often, hmm, often, often. I forgot. There is a kind of a good, more like specific name. We we Anyways, let's do often for now. Let's make it simple. And or maybe weekly. Finding a name is really hard, especially here. How often per week? Um, regularity, probably yeah, often per week, and then, but well, it's not the best name. I'm not sure if I can find a better name than that, though. So in a software I'm building, I had to use a similar, I had a similar issue to find a good name, and I found it. But I'm not sure if I can go to the code base. I try to, uh, but I think it will take too long. And here, on. Hmm. And I'm not even sure where it was in the code base, I think. Yeah. Interval could be interval, like that's what I did. Um, interval per week. 
Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's interval. Yeah, anyways, four, it doesn't really matter. It's just an example. I know I got, it's, it's a good habit. So I suggest you always to find really good names, naming your variables, your classes, your functions. It's much more difficult, much harder than you think, especially for your whole team, for everybody else. He will look to your code to, to make sense. Sometimes a name makes sense, does make sense for you, but doesn't make sense for someone else. So now I'm going to have, yeah, basically it will be const and there I will do profile. And so here, Pierre, you see, I'm not in, I use a spread operator and then I will do hobbies, of course. Now, if I do that way, I will have a new object inside of this object. But if I want to have only the properties, all of the elements, I just do this way. And now if I do profile, you see, I have swimming. Oh, of course, because the name, that's a problem, right? When, and I'm so happy, I'm so glad we had that issue. When you merge, when you use a spread operator, you have to be so careful because it will overwrite the value. Because name is the same, boom, it did over, overridden it. So um, when you have the same key being overwritten, it can be an issue. So what you should do to prevent that, well, you have different things you could do. What? Yeah, um, something simple because this will always be an issue otherwise. Um, you could do name and after you can just do the, the rest of it, the rest of the, um, so here, person name, person name, perfect. Then hobby name and there I will use hobbies dot name perfect and now that's fine and here that's okay we can do um, but that's a problem because I will show you so it's really nice to show and to practice and so that's why I really I like to make mistakes so you can ah, look I have a mistake already here Indeed, profile, we already assigned it. So I will do profile two. Perfect. And now if I do profile two, you see, so here, what I do, uh, oh, wait, oh, profile two. Perfect. So here, what I have, person name, hobby name. So it's almost perfect, you see. But the issue is because we have a game name and we don't want to have it anymore. So how do you do it? Again, uh, we have basically to remove it. So here I have person name, hobby name, that's fine. Hobbies, okay, we, we use a spread operator, uh, but the problem is that it will just use everything and we don't. That way you could either do something like this, swimming so to prevent that, we we are on hobbies, right? Yeah, hobbies. So now I will do. Mm -hmm. And here I need to have the name. So the name for hobby. So name. Mm -hmm. Interval per week. Yeah, that was the only one. And now, hobby. I access to interval week. Perfect. And I need to get a curly bracket here. One curly bracket there. I can, and now from Pierre, I will have to do the same. I don't use name. I will use the, the gender because the name is already there. This is a kind of a messy, I mean, not messy way, but it's very verbose. Like we write a lot and of course too much. 
but I want to show you already this way. The other way, right, is to remove the elements we don't want before, previously. Basically doing some data wrangling, like doing some cleanup. And that way, when we tidy up our data before, it will, um, it will be already clean before to manipulate the data. So Pierre gender, Pierre age, so here age. And then what did I have? Pierre age, Pierre gender, that's it, yeah. And now, oops, I don't even see where it is. Right, um, <laughs> Pierre age, that looks correct. So, oh, apparently I have a small, oh no, that's okay, it's because I already have profile two. I will just use profile three. And we will have more or less what we want, but it's very verbose. Like we we type a lot for not much. You see, so now I have person name, hobby name, gender. That's exactly what we wanted. But basically, the best way is to rewrite your array, your object, or just to delete what you don't want to. That could be also a way. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, there's no a lot of other ways, basically. So, yeah, no. Um, with array, it's easier because you have a lot of functions you can use to remove uh, the properties uh, with array. But in our case, we can. I'm thinking of a different way we could also use. Otherwise, you could also have like a new person and. Oops. Oh, yeah. Uh, Okay, new person, and then here I will just need to have to play with the name. So I will keep one name. So basically, the name of the profile, that's fine. So we do Pierre, but before that, that's the rest of the object. I will do hobbies, that's fine, like this. And here I will have. I have to be careful. So Pierre will be at the end. Again, that's not the best because it depends on the order. Hobbies. And here I will do hobby name. Hobbies. Name. Something ops like this. I need a equal sign nearly there. Perfect. And now new person. And you see, hobby name, swimming, name, Pierre. That's also a way you could do it. But anyway, this video was only to show you the spread operator and how you could use the rest of, of it and to reuse it. Uh, we also do that quite often with React. For instance, when you have a component and the component has different parameters. So you have like, let's say, name component and then the, uh, you will have the property one name and then property two, probably age. So let's do person. Let's say we have a component in React is person, the name and then age. And then we just close the component. That way it's nice. But if I have it already elsewhere, the properties in an object, I could just do person, just like this. And person will have name and will have age as arguments, I mean, as a property. So you will have a person object with name and then age, you see, like this. And then after you use your components like that. And that's also what you can do. And then insert inside of the component, again, the component, normally when you have your component name, and of course, what you expect is to have the name. So basically it would be either props. In my case, I prefer to use, to destructure the value. So it would be name that's inside of the component. And then I will have age like this, you see.
and um, perfect. And after, of course, you have your component inside. That's inside of your component. And render, so you, you return what you want. And after, that's the end of the component. But basically, here, or you could do, do of course, the old way. Um, yeah, that's basically what, and after you have to use name. Well, that's the way also how you use REST. Um, because sometimes you use a spread operator, you can also use something like this. And of course, from your component, then it's the other way around. So you have like another key name, and then after that's the name, and that's everything else. So you have the name, and then you pass everything else, and everything else will be an object, will be like the properties of everything else. So basically, it's a props. So when you have your component, again, like if I do export, it's just to show you uh, nothing serious, but I will, sometimes I want to have, okay, I, I know I will have name, I will have age, and then everything else, all of the props, I also want to have them um, from elsewhere, but I want also age and name to be there. All right, so that's the end of this little video. Well, little, not that short, actually. And I wish you a happy drinking coffee and, of course, happy coding. See you in another video. Bye-bye.